Imagine a world without apples, almonds, and broccoli. It takes honeybees to pollinate most of our favorite fruits, nuts, and vegetables. But the bees are mysteriously disappearing. Some commercial beekeepers in San Diego have already been affected by this phenomena. KPBS environmental reporter Ed Joyce tells us beekeepers are keeping a close eye on the research, some of it at UC San Diego. No bees, no honey, no work, no money. So how did you first get into this beekeeping business? Uh, we had a friend of the family that was a beekeeper in San Diego. Alan Mikulich has been a commercial beekeeper since 1985. He's worked with bees for more than 35 years. Mikulich maintains hives in San Diego and Riverside counties. On this day, he's checking hives near Temecula. The bees are pollinating nearby wild buckwheat flowers and the hives are dripping with honey. See, this honeycomb, is, it's been sitting here for a while. The wax is real light colored when they first make it and they seal over but it's been walked on so it darkened down a little bit. But we'll open up some others. This is older comb. But feel that. Whoa there's that's about, heavy. There's about five pounds of honey in that. But Mikulich finds a troubling sign in another hive. Uh, this could be actually a virus, deformed wing virus. This one right here. See how there's no wings to it? Just an outline. See that there? Okay. And if you take the one next to it here, see it's got fully developed wings. That's probably why this hive is weaker than the others. Now, then the concern is not not the honey, but just that that more of this could happen to more of your bees. Right. See, here's another one here that's it's a little kind of a stubby looking thing. The mite. It's either a virus or the mite lived on the bee while it was developing, and they sucked the blood out of them, so they come out deformed or or small. If you have gentle bees and they're making honey and it's nice weather, you can do just about anything you want with them. They're not going to attack you. Mikulich is not your typical beekeeper. He wears shorts, a short-sleeved shirt, and no gloves when he works his hives. He occasionally gets stung, but doesn't seem to mind. I got stung once already, but you wouldn't know it. But Mikulich is no different than other beekeepers and farmers around the world when it comes to being concerned about the disappearance of bees. The mass disappearance of bee colonies started about four years ago. Scientists believe colony collapse disorder, or CCD, is caused by a combination of factors, including parasitic mites, a new virus, and pesticide exposure. In the United States, one out of three foods that we eat has to have bees for pollination and the plants don't reproduce. And in California, the most important crop is almonds, and they're 99% dependent upon the honeybees in February to pollinate their trees. Without the bees, they get no crop. Mikulich says nearly one million hives, half of all the beehives in the United States, are brought into California each year to pollinate the state's almond groves. The USDA says California produces 80 percent of the world's almonds. The United States could lose 15 billion dollars worth of crops, including California almonds, without bees to pollinate them. Scientists say it's likely the varroa mite plays a role in colony collapse disorder. Mikulich and other beekeepers have lost hives because of the mites. Oh, I'm very concerned. Uh, I've lost 50% or more of the last five out of the last six years on colony collapse. But these parasites and the viruses and the, the new bacteria that we have from Asia are just devastating the industry at times. Some of the answers to why the bees are disappearing may come from research here at UC San Diego. We have the bees individually labeled and we're watching them inside the nest to see what they do, how they communicate. UCSD biologist James Nye is trying to determine if certain pesticides affect the bees' ability to communicate. Because this is a large part of how bees actually pollinate our crops. A bee finds an almond tree, she actually will go back inside the nest and tell her nest mates where to go to find that almond tree. And if that communication is disrupted, which we think it may be, and some studies suggest it is, that could also have an impact on the health of the colonies. Nye says sublethal doses of pesticides have been used to kill pests that threaten honeybees. But those pesticides may be affecting the bees, too. When bees find flowers, a food source, they return to the hive and do a dance to tell the other bees where that food is located. So all of these bees here that you're seeing, here's one actually that just came in, and she's quite excited. You can see that she's rapidly moving around the nest. Um, they are, for the large part, communicating to the other bees where they should go to find the food. Now, because the food source is close by, right outside the entrance, they're doing a round dance. But basically, as they start dancing, you're going to see they're being followed by other bees inside the nest. And this is how they get the information about where to go to find the food. But Nye says pesticide may disrupt the process. 
if they are treated with sublethal doses of pesticide, they actually um, will not come back to the nest. They may get lost. And one study suggests they actually will dance less. So their efficiency at recruiting other bees to that same food source is decreased, and the colony is getting less food into it. And weaker colonies can mean a greater susceptibility to disease, mites, bacteria, all considered factors in colony collapse. That wasn't bad. I only got stung five or six times. Yeah. <laughs> For San Diego beekeeper Alan Mikulich, it's been a good honey harvest this season, and his bees are, so far, mostly healthy. But he, along with other beekeepers, biologists, and farmers, are paying close attention to the ongoing research, which they hope will one day provide answers to why the bees are disappearing.